It's amazing how God sometimes does things that just kind of blow us out the water. And I'm sitting there, I'm preparing my message, and my phone rings, and it's, it's Raymond. And he says, dude, I got something that you got to hear. I said, all right, well, read it for me. And he starts, and he reads that. And he's talking about this recall of our sinful nature, recall of our humanity, the recall of, of our souls, the recall. And this morning I'm preaching from, if you want to go ahead and get, get your Bibles ready, I'm preaching from Ezekiel chapter 36. It's something that you've heard often, you've heard it a whole lot, but I want to take this text and put it in context, and I want to, to speak, I almost change my message, Raymond, after I talk to you, but I'm going to stick with what the Lord gave me this morning, which is you blackened God's eye. You've given God a black eye. And you'll see where I get that from in a minute. Now, I know some of y'all saying, boy, he already done lost it. He of course, he can black God's eye, but let's look at the text and let me have some fun, if you will. You blackened God's eye. Ezekiel chapter 36. We will start In verse number 16. Ezekiel 36, starting at verse number 16. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, when the people of Israel were living in their own land, they defiled it by their conduct and their actions. Their conduct was like a woman's mouth, mouthly uncleanness in my sight. So I poured out my wrath on them because they had shed blood in the land and because they had defiled it with their idols. I dispersed them among the nations and they were scattered through the countries. I judged them according to their conduct and their actions. And wherever they went, and whenever, wherever they went among the nations, they profaned my holy name, for it was said of them, these are the Lord's people, and yet they had to leave his land. I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations, where they had gone. Therefore say to the house of Israel, this is what the sovereign Lord says, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations. Where you have gone, I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, the name you have profaned among them. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the sovereign Lord, when I show myself holy through you before their eyes. For I will pay attention to every place you see, I will. I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you. You will be cleaned. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit in you and I will remove from your heart a stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. I want to read some of this from the message. Especially verse number 22 and 23. Therefore tell Israel, message of God the Master, I am doing this for you. No, I am not doing this for you, O Israel. I am doing it for me, to save my character, my holy name, which you have blackened in every country, country where you go. You blackened God's name. It's said because of our conduct and our deeds. 
our conduct and our deeds have, have caused God to get a black eye. We represent who? God. And when you and I go into different situations and we are not living our lives the way God wants us to live it, we cause God's name to get a what? Black eye. We dot God's eye. And I love the fact that he says, not because of you. Not for you. I ain't doing this for you. God's given us every opportunity to get ourselves together, has he? But some of us struggle with getting ourselves together. Some of us got stuff we don't want to let go of. We got some people we don't want to let go of. We got some habits we can't let go of. And because we live in our flesh, we live in our emotions. He says that I got to do something with you. I got to do it. I will, I will, I you don't have the ability. You're not strong enough. You don't you don't want to, some of us. So he makes it very clear. He makes it very clear who's gonna do this work? God is. Why? Because we have profaned his holy name. And I believe we are all guilty of this. We are all guilty of being a part of that recall. Every single one of us are on that recall list. Every single one of us got stuff and junk and things that profane the name of God. We don't represent the name of God well. We do that. We do that. And one of the things that I think is very important here, church, is that we need to understand that from last week, last week's message, we talked to, it was from Colossians chapter 1, verse 21. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. You see, here God is trying to get some of us to act right. He's trying to get some of us to live right and to do better. Not by my standards, not by your parents' standards, not by granny's standards, but by God's standards. He wants you to live right. And because we don't have that ability, we're giving God a constant black eye. But then he says, I got a remedy. There's only one way to fix this thing. There's only one way to do it. And he says, I will. I want you to pay attention to this. So in verse 25, he says, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. Why is this so important that he says, I will? Because what you got to grab a hold of, if you go over to Leviticus chapter 15, what you're going to find out is that when a person had a discharge, it didn't matter if it was male or female. I mean, you need to read this. It's pretty graphic. It'll hook you up. What you got to understand is when there was a discharge, a human discharge, that person was unclean and they had to go wash. You had to go wash. Some of them said you are unclean until evening. That means that just because you wash your hands don't mean you are done. No, no, no. You need to go consecrate. You need to stay away from everybody at least till nighttime. At least till nighttime. There were other things that you were unclean. You had to stay away for a full what? Seven days. It went on to say, if you sat, listen, if you sat on a chair of somebody that had a discharge, you were unclean all day long. That's how serious God takes this issue of being unclean. He says he's going to have to sprinkle you with some water. That person had to wash all their clothes. They had to wash the furniture. They had to clean it all up and then wait until the allotted time that God said, okay, 
we get saved and we want to go save the world like, like, like we got it all together. We get cleaned up, we get a little Bible verse and there we go. Pew! We need to be careful. There is a time that evening, seven days later, read it. Leviticus chapter 15. But then he goes on to say in verse 26, and this is the one that everybody hears. Everyone knows this one. I will give you a new heart and put a, a new spirit in you. I will remove from you a heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. How many of you have heard that before? You've heard that before, that God's going to take out your stony heart and put you in a heart of flesh. I want to look at this uh, 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 realistically so that we can grab hold of what you're saying you want God to do. The word heart there is the human heart considered as the center or source of emotions, personality, the attributes, etc. The inmost thought and feelings, your conscience, your feelings, love, your devotion, your sympathy, your mood, the center of thought and emotion, your will. Do you understand that when you say that you want to, you know, search my heart, oh God, you're asking God to search not just your physical heart, you're asking God to search your emotions, you're asking God to search your conscience, you're asking God to search your devotions, the thing you're sympathetic to, it's not just search my heart and show me, no, 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 you're saying search my in most parts you're saying the place where I hold my little secrets search my heart imagine what has happened to our hearts it says we have hearts of stone now I need you to get this when you have gone through a religious experience and you've been tugged on by the Holy Ghost. And anybody have this? You said this. I feel like my heart is breaking. Hear me, hear me. When you say that your heart is breaking, it is God saying, I am taking my hammer and I am doing what Ezekiel 26 says. I am crushing that heart of stone and it hurts. It hurts when God has to say to you, child, I love you enough that I got to break you. Oh, church, hear me this morning. Some of us live our lives under that kind of strain because we are on recall. We have never been born again. We have never given God everything. And God says, I want all of you. Why? Because you represent me. You got to be right. I can't have you messed up. So God says, I'm going to do exactly what this text says. I am going to take out that heart of stone, but I don't know much about construction, but I see it all the time. And I see them jackhammering and beating to break up the stone. Anybody feel like God is just breaking you up this morning? You feel like he's just going inside your heart and punching you in your chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it takes to some of us. That's what it takes to some of us. That's what it takes for some of us. God has to literally break up that stone, that hard place, that heart that has been so pained, that heart that is so hard. He has to break it up. You ought to be glad about it. You ought to be glad that you can feel the pain of God tugging at your heart, trying to take out that hardness so he can do what? Give you a new heart. A heart of flesh. Something he can work with, pliable. Something he can mold. We ain't nothing but clay. We ain't nothing but a little dirt. I know we think we all that in the bag of chips. We ain't nothing but a little dirt. That's all. And he takes it and he molds it and makes it to what he wants it to be. You're being broken. 
He's trying to get that old heart out. Hello, church. He's trying to get your old heart out so he can put in a new one. But I always thought of just, most people just focus on the heart, but it says also he's going to give you a new spirit. Anybody see that? He's also going to give you a new spirit. The word spirit there is this word of breath, wind, mind, heart, as the immaterial part of a person that can respond to God. The seed of life, spirit being, especially the spirit of God. Something that you must understand is that it says it's the part of you that can respond to God. We have a small as spirit. Not just, it's not talking about the Holy Spirit there. We're talking about our human spirit. Our human spirit, it is what, it is what grabbed hold of me. It said that, that, that it came from another Greek word which meant to feel relief. Listen to me. To feel relief. That, that word spirit there, he's going to give you a new spirit. He's going to let you feel some relief. You're under pressure. You're under yokes. You're under bondage. But he's saying, I'm going to put a new spirit in you. Why? So that you can get some relief. Relief from what, God? The weight of living in this world. I'm going to get you some relief. And what I picture in my mind is, because I just from my little bit of studying, one of the things that get me, if a little bit of wind is coming this way, and a bigger wind is coming this way, who's going to win? That big wind is going to suck that junk in, and it's all going to be consumed. Listen to what I'm telling you. And you will surrender your little S spirit to the big spirit of God. He will take you and give you some relief. You won't have to be fighting on your own. God will just carry you in the way you need to go. Anybody feel like they need to be carried this morning? You feel like you're just being sucked up in life. Let the Holy Ghost come along and move you where you need to be. You need to let that happen. Why is it that in 1 Thessalonians verse 5 and verse 26, chapter 5 and 23, it says this here, 5 23, it says, sanctify your whole spirit, your whole body, and your whole soul. What do I need my spirit sanctified for, Pastor Ricky? Because it says that's the part of you that can respond to God. That's the part of you that's going to respond to God. You're giving your little human spirit over to all kinds of things. I think you need to surrender it over to whom? God. In closing, verse 31. Then you will remember your evil ways and wicked deeds and you will loathe yourselves for your sins and detestable practices. I'm going to read that from the message. And then you will think about, think back over your terrible lives, the evil, the shame, and be thoroughly disgusted with yourself, realizing how badly you've lived all those obscenities you've carried out. It has really made me think that no matter how good I think I am, no matter how far I've come, no matter what I've accomplished, it is nothing. Because I know that in my private time, listen church, when my private time, I know that when I get frustrated, I know that when you mess with my flesh too much, I am not holy. And the standard is holiness. I am doing this, why? For my holy name. Because you and I are going to go and we're going to mess up. But because of his holy name has been blackened. His holy name and we represent him. He wants us to get cleaned up so he has to take out that heart of stone. Put in a heart of flesh. Remove all your junk out your way. Cleanse you and then take your little human spirit and give it over to the big S spirit so that you can flow in the way God has for you so that the Holy Ghost
else can remind you and show you that you are not all that and you must stay in dependence upon God at all times. If not, you will. You will, you will, you will give God a black eye. You'll do it. You'll do it. You'll do it. You'll do it. So as we search our hearts, what is he showing you? What is he showing you? You wonder why when you get into a real moment of worship, all you can do is bow down and cry. There is no pride when it comes to the divine presence of God. Because he is holy and he is awesome and he is powerful. And he wants to come in that moment and give you some relief. But if you have not had your heart dealt with, you'll fight him. You'll resist him. You'll run away from him. You'll say, God, I'm unworthy. He knows that. You ain't telling God he, something he don't know. But God, I'm, 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 I'm unable to receive that love. Oh, really? God, God, I still got some things I want to do. I ain't done so in my royal hopes. All right? When we look at our lives, we should be disgusted. We should not be so proud of everything that we've accomplished in life. Because to be honest with you, we really ain't accomplished that much. Some of us are just coming into the truth about what God has us for our future. And we can't really flow in it because we're still operating in our humanity. I'm here to challenge you. I'm here to challenge us. If it means something to you the way you represent Christ, I want you to raise your hand. If it means something to you the way you represent Christ, you actually care the way people look at you and your testimony, then I'm going to ask you another question. How many of you have had your heart broken by God? You had your heart broken by God. And you know that you got a new heart. You know it. How many of you know you you know without a shadow of that you got a new heart? You know it because listen, some of y'all was mean as rattlesnakes. And you ain't that mean no more. I ain't more like a garden snake or something. I don't know. You can love people, you can talk to people, you know that you've been changed, you know God's done a work on you. But how many of us can, even through all that, we still recognize that we got some conduct and some deeds and some acts that that, that, that scripture was for you and me. That scripture was from you and me. That, that, that had me, that had Ricky written all over it because of my conduct and my acts. And by the way, just so you know, the reason why you act in that way, because that's on the inside of you. That's on the inside of you. Never forget the fact that Jeremiah 17, 9 says that the heart is the most deceitful thing above all. Who can understand it? Who can understand it? For those of you that say, well, I really got a good heart, and that person really got a good heart. Oh, really? <laughs> For real? You are deceived. That's an official notice, just so you know. If you really think you got a good heart, that's an official notice that Nay, nay. Bow your heads. In light of this message, in light of you thinking about your conduct that will not please God, in light of you thinking about some places that are still in your heart that you're harboring anger and unforgiveness and resentment. 
places that there's still some hurt and there's some pain. How do you know? Because when it comes up, it puts you in a bad mental and emotional space. You know that that's there. I need you to receive this, church. Your human spirit will not contend with the mighty spirit of God. It's like a pebble being thrown into the ocean. That's how you need to view yourself. As a pebble being thrown into the ocean. Matter of fact, think of you being thrown into the ocean. How are you going to handle it? How are you going to survive it? I'm asking you to consider surrendering this heart of yours to a move of God. Surrendering that spirit that he's given you. He's given you to the move of God. Ask him to show you some attitudes and mindsets that are still displeasing to him. Ask him to show you some places that you still harbor resentment and pain. It's touchy little areas that when they come up, they just overrun you. You can't fight them. He's here just for you. He wants you to take notice this morning. If there's a spot that you're still defending yourself, you're still defending yourself, and it said you would get <clears throat> angry, go on defense. That's a spot. That's a spot. That's a spot. So, Father, as we sit here in your presence, and thank you for the visitation of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for coming and caring. I'm asking you, God, to show us. We're asking you, God, to do what that text said, which is to let us feel some relief, even right now. Relief from guilt and shame. Relief from anger, resentment, bitterness, unworthiness, hopelessness. Because, Father, you're going to restore. You restored Israel. Not because of them, but because of your great name. So, Father, as we sit here, we're asking that just like you did Israel that you restore us that you get us cleaned up you get us right not for us but because we represent your great name Holy Spirit have your way do what you need to do and we'll let you we will let you help us to deal with people that we struggle with that we can represent you in that moment. That we'll die to ourselves and represent you in that moment. Help us to get into your presence. Help us to block out all obstacles and find time to get into your, your presence so your spirit can overtake us, overshadow us, consume us. That we will be able to walk out our calling. We just bless you and praise you and love you for not throwing us away, God, but working with us. And we do ask all this incredible things that only you can do, like the healing. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.